certainly a call of God uh, on my life. You know, I tried to avoid it. The, the desire grew stronger and stronger. Uh, God just kind of ordered our footsteps. So I simply obeyed. We're here to serve the community. We're here to be a blessing. Um, one of the things we've sought to do since we've uh, been here is to reach out. Hi, I'm co-pastor Teresa Johnson and I would like to welcome you to Real Talk, Real People with my special guest today, Ms. Cassandra O'Neill. Glad to be here. Amen. <laughs> Great having you. We just finished a phenomenal workshop with Minister Cassandra O'Neill, and oh, it was a blessing. <laughs> and God used her to tell and make this workshop just for Zion Christian Center, and he uses her in this area for other churches as well. Tell us about the movement that God has you on right now. Co-Pastor, I'm glad you used the word movement okay. when it comes to praise and worship, because I grew up in traditional Baptist uh, background, so during that time we had devotion. And I'm calling it a movement because we made, we've made a movement from devotion to a time of corporate praise and worship. Okay. And some churches are still doing the devotion, but for those churches who are looking to make that move from just a time of devotion where there's a deacon who prays and then yeah. we sing a song and then there's a scripture that's read to corporate worship where everybody is singing together. There may be wow. a scripture that's read, but now it has a uh, uh, feeling in it. And, yes. and then the songs are congregation friendly. They're right. easy for the people to learn. So I uh, have been called by God and gifted by God to be a worship leader. And so the passion that I have for what I do, I want to share. And so I was glad that you, Pastor and uh, Brother William, actually invited me to come. And just being able to tailor make it. I don't do a, I mean, I can do a broad and generic thing, but right. I like to fit it to the team so that one, they feel that it is for them. Right. Two, that it's something that they can do. And yes. then three, to actually see them doing it. They know that it's a possible for them to do. Well, I, what we experienced was actually seeing our praise team that was already, you know, used mightily, but you actually got through you, used you to take them to a whole nother level to wow. where it actually drew, I could feel the drawing of the mm -hmm. Spirit of God just through what they what they learned when they demonstrated it. Wow. Demonstration. And I'll tell you, as I was teaching, I could see, I like to call them light bulbs. <laughs> I can see when somebody says, oh, yeah. <laughs> or I could hear that, you know, when they make those comments. And I, I just, I feel when I was able to come in and, and get a feel of the group and see them, they actually came out and, and did what they would normally do on a Sunday, which was great. But now to add, Understanding yes. that they're no longer, yes. they're not just worship leaders or not just a praise team, not right. just musicians, but they are instruments. That's the key. Wow. When you can get them to understand that they're instruments in the hand of God and that wow. he's the one that's doing the using, it adds value. Wow. When I just say I'm just a singer, then that's all I'm going to do, just sing. sing. But when I know that I'm a worshiper and I'm a worship leader, I'm going to lead God's people well into his presence. Well, I, I think the benefit as a pastor is being able to know that God is preparing the praise team or the singers or the choir to be able to prepare the way. And you, you took a lot of time in giving that understanding. Because I feel that that's very important. Right. What a praise team does, how important, this is what I want to say, it's so important what the praise team does okay. that if they do it well, it can take that worship service to a whole nother level. Wow. If they do it in a bad way or not so well, it could cause that service to go down. And what'll happen, wow. pastor will have to come up and all the ground that wasn't tilled, all those things that weren't taken care of in worship, now he wow. has to try to fight through that to get the word that God has for them. So when a team has to understand, they're coming in, they're setting the atmosphere and they're taking care of all the, the, the problems, not solving them, but getting the people to lay them down for a minute. Wow. Lay them down so you can get ready to hear what God has to say to you. So when did you know God was calling you to be a praise and worship consultant? 
Wow. Um, I'm going to go back to 2007. <laughs> now, I'm not going to say I answered willingly because I'm like, I can't get up there and tell anybody. I was I, I was gaining knowledge, but I was right. like, I can't share that. Right. But it got to the point where it was so much in me and it was building up in me, I had to let it out because I wanted other people to feel and experience what I was feeling. Yeah. So I said to God, whatever you want to do, you can use me. And then people started calling as I was you know, just sharing. Like I would have other people that are friends that are worship leaders. So I would say to them, you know, try this. If you do this, and they're like, well, can you come and talk to our praise team? And, and that's how it started. That's and so started. now this is a part of what I do. I'm as a, wor a praise and worship consultant. Sister O'Neill, what are you doing? Co Pastor, I'm actually tweeting. I'm letting people know that I am here right oh. now in Roxboro, North Carolina. And if you're on Twitter and you're computer savvy as well, you can follow me at, at Cassandra O'Neill. Cassandra, you know, we had an, I had an expectation. I did not know exactly how God was going to use you, but my expectation was that our praise and worship would go to another level where my expectations were met. But even though God truly used you, what I realized is we are going to have to maintain what God d did today. And so we're right now looking at our schedule, trying to see what dates we have available and you have available to keep you coming back, to help bring, uh, not just begin the foundation, but to build on the foundation that God used you to place here at Zion. Pastor, that would be great. And you know I'm open to it. I would love to come. As a matter of fact, I teach other workshops. I mean, that is beyond the veil, you know, and that's really geared towards a church who's trying to understand what praise and worship is. Yes. They don't quite get it, and that's probably why we see a lot of people standing around sometimes. Right. And so it's a, it meant to equip them, to give them understanding. So there, there are many more exploring worship, discovering true worship. And that again is meant for a church. It goes for the ministers, the hospitality people. How what the first people that you see when you come into the church, yes. how that ties into how worship is gonna be. And that's what's so wonderful, even before the workshop, you had uh, requested that certain people be there. It wasn't just for the singers, but for others that are, it's like a connection. Mm -hmm. Everything is connected for the final experience yes. of God. Yes. I love it. Yes, I love it. <laughs> so there are many more uh, workshops that I do because I have a passion for them, always developing more. I mean, I've got some, it may sound simple, but it's like late for rehearsal again. That is wow. a, Oh, yeah. A session. And it's not meant to, to, to make anybody feel bad. It's just to make them think about time. That's something that you can't get back. Right. And if you're late for rehearsal, that means rehearsal is going to run late because you can't rob God of the time that we said we were going to put in to get him what we're going to give him. Right. right. And so I, you put it that way. People, they'll change. You'll see things change. <laughs> well, wonderful. And we're back. Minister O'Neill. You, when you came through the doors, you didn't come in empty-handed. You had a book, CDs, so much that you brought. And it didn't just minister to us as just the singers, but what God has given you ministers to more than just the singing area of the ministry. Could you tell us a little bit more about that? I'd be glad to. I'd be glad to. Um, today, as I shared already, we did two workshops, so I came prepared. The first workshop was understanding the role of music in worship. And I think I saw a lot of lights come on when I mentioned that you don't have to have music. There's no, you don't have to have music to worship, but it does enhance. Yeah. And in this particular teaching, we do cover not just singing, we touch on musicians, we're working with media. And I'm gonna put a plug right there. Yeah. When it comes to media, you know, if you're going to use graphics, if you're going to have the words on the screen, all that stuff has to be in there and it has to be consistent. I want to say to those people that are using media, when it comes to placing the message on the screen and pastor, your pastor is bringing forth the word, just listen. Let him preach his message. You might already have his topics and his points, but let him give it. And then you put it on the screen. <laughs> <laughs> Little things like that. That enhances, again, the worship. Um, I really enjoyed teaching that one. And then the other one that, I, again, I mentioned, uh, wor Worship Leading 101. Right. This takes a praise team through everything. And, and uh, You were here, so you saw I had them come out. 
yeah. and do what they would normally do on any given Sunday. And then we went through the teaching and then had them go back and do it again. And you saw for yes. yourself really the difference, difference when you understand not only who you are, but the gift that you have within you and how to use it. So what I do before I even come into the church, of course, I'm going to be conversating with the person who's um, reached out to me get some little background on the church itself, on the pastor and, and, and those things. Then when I come, I come prepared because the, these are actually workbooks. I feel rather than just have me stand and talk and lecture, right. if you're filling in the blanks, yeah. you know, that's a way of engaging them and asking difference. questions. So I would say to anybody who's looking to, to do this or have me come, you won't be disappointed. And that's not cocky. That's not bragging. That's knowing that God has gifted me to do this and is meant for me to share. And again, if you're looking to go from where you are to a whole nother place, I'll come in and you'll see the difference. I don't have to, to sell you on this. I can tell you, you'll get your money's worth. Yes. It'll be an investment. And you know, anything you invest in, you get a return on. You and we've already seen that return. <laughs> yes. And, and, and I will totally totally um, agree with everything that she said. It is, it, it is even more than what she said. And we have an expectation for tomorrow, which will be Sunday morning. We have an expectation of what God is going to do. Minister Cassandra O'Neill, mm -hmm. when you came here, we already had compiled a list of things that we wanted to address as far as the praise and worship ministry mm -hmm. here at Zion Christian Center. Some of those things were negative, and some of those things were things we wanted to enhance in the areas that are already positive, but we want to enhance. Mm -hmm. Now, I know that Zion Christian Center is not the only church that has some areas that uh, are negative and that's hindering the presence of God from being released in the atmosphere during our Sunday services. Could you expound on some of the negatives right now that are going on in churches. Okay, well, from the music side, yeah. I would say um, some of the negatives would be, you know, if you got a singer that has got a great voice, right. you know, the crowd loves them. Yeah. Could be a little pride, you know, they're gonna go out today in, in me and, and, and do that. So I would say not being a person that, of humility. Okay. Um, I had already mentioned something about late. Um, that is a, 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 a negative. Right. to show up late, even if service doesn't start till 8.30, you need to be there far before, yeah, before that and, and right. being ready to pray, which is another negative. Okay. I don't think a lot of people spend time praying that God will use them in worship. I think if we did more of that, then we would see some things different. Um, one other negative, I guess, that stands out is a lack of unity. Okay. Even though it may yeah. be a team, there's one team that's standing there together. There's all there's friction. There's yes. you know n no cohesiveness yes. among the team. That's true. Yes. So those are just a few to, to name that that I've seen. Well, you said lack of prayer that stood out because we know that the scripture tells us that if we would come together, humble ourselves and pray, and seek His face, there it is, uh, and turn from our wicked ways, He would heal. He would forgive. You know what I mean? And God would just do so many great and mighty things. So if prayer is taking place within the praise and worship leaders, then that means healing and forgiveness. All this is being released out of them because of the prayer life that they have. And so, um, and then honoring God and honoring his time. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. when you uh, give God honor by being early, and preparing your mind and your heart. Mm -hmm. That says, God, I honor you and I give reverence to you. So mm -hmm. this is uh, those are just a couple <laughs> of things. Can you imagine what God is gonna do in your church when she comes and deals with the specifics? Like I said, we, gave, we had a list and God used her to cover the whole list. Now, mm -hmm. let's talk about some of the positives because we do, we do have a, a, a great praise team with uh, the, the sound, they have a good sound, but what are some of the other positives that God is doing in praise and worship? One that jumps right out me at, at, at me <laughs> is when the worship leader or even the team is open and sensitive to the spirit. They're not moved by what's popular. They're not moved by, oh, the congregation really likes that. It's more so, God, what is it that you want to hear from your children today? Wonderful. Um, 
Another one, I think now more churches are, are trying to, to learn yes. about praise and worship. Yes, That's a positive, to, yes. to want to learn and then reach out to ask someone for help. And then the other is being willing to to improve on the gift that God right. has given you. Just because you're good doesn't mean you can't be better. Right. So putting an investment on the gift that God has placed. Yes. And that investment could be time. Okay, I'm, I'm a pretty good alto. I want to be a better alto. I'm right. going to spend time practicing songs, doing vocal um, exercises. Right. I'm going to see if somebody can help me. If I see someone who is where I want to be at the moment. Can you help me? Yeah. So those kind of things. Awesome. Yeah. Awesome. Minister Cassandra, with that beautiful illustration that you just gave us, <laughs> it's evident that God has anointed you in song. And it makes me very excited about this new CD that you have. Um, could you tell us a little bit more about what God has birthed through you? Sure, Pastor. <laughs> Actually, this um, is my debut CD, and it actually debuted March of 2011. Um, funny story, I'm not going to get up here and say, you know, I always knew that I was going to record. <laughs> that is a straight out lie. Okay. I um, always thought if I did, it would be with the choir, with the team, because I've right. sang with, you know, groups. But this way, the way this came about was actually one of our uh, members at Nations Ford Community Church is a producer. And oh. his very first Sunday at the church, I was leading worship. And he said to himself, that girl needs to be recording. So he got up the nerve to come and approach me. And I kept putting him off, I'm being honest. I was like, no, you know, God's going to do it. It's going to be with the Nation's Four Community right. Praise Team, exactly. you know. <laughs> Won't include everybody. Yeah. Right. <laughs> but he kept after, kept after me. And it was something he said one day that just, it was like confirming that this is God. He says, you know what? I think I believe in you more than you believe in yourself. Wow. And it's like. God was saying, I've been trying to tell you all this time. So we went in, and, and what I did, I wrote the um, the first single, which is incredible, and the song took off. And so he was like, okay, let's do another one. So we did another one, and then another one, and now we have a 13-track CD, My and <laughs> it's getting airplay. It's it's. It's out, and, and so I'm excited. So if you want to get your own copy, I will tell you this, from the time you put this CD in, <laughs> it's a journey. It wow. is a journey. You're going to go from prepping to go into God's presence, to going into God's presence, to laying down all your mm, cares nah. and concerns, and then come out rejoicing. So if you want to get your own <laughs> copy, you can download it. It's actually at all the download, downloadable sites, Rhapsody, CD Baby, iTunes, okay. under Cassandra O'Neill Life Songs. It is in our Envision Life Resource Center in Charlotte. Okay. We are working now on Walmart and Target and those other okay. stores. But you can definitely get this at, at all the download sites. So it's Cassandra O'Neill Life, Life Songs. Songs. So make sure that you pick up a CD. And I'm excited myself about listening to it. Trust me, I'll put mine in the car today. <laughs> uh, but Cassandra, you know, when God begins a great work in an individual, he doesn't stop. God is constantly, constantly going, taking us from glory to glory. So what's going on now? We know that CD is done, but what is God doing now? You're absolutely right. We are actually already starting to work on CD number two. Wow. What I'm loving about it, uh, because praise and worship is my heart. This one is, is, like I said, it's a journey, and it takes you through different styles of music. But okay. the next one is praise and worship, heart hitting. Wow. There's uh, the title, the single that's going to come out is called Once Again. Once Again. You find yourself, just like what you said about the workshops, you know, you can't just get it one time and, 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 and be, have it all. Right. It's coming from the standpoint that here I am, God, once again in your presence. I need a touch from that's you right. again. That's right. I need to hear your voice again. Wow. And then and it explains that now I really understand why you'll <laughs> never leave. You ever wonder why he says I'll never leave you nor forsake you? Because he knew we're going to need him again. Yes. If he came and left and came and left, there'll be a time that we need him. He's not there, but he knows that we're going to need him. So the next CD, which is going to be called Once Again. Once Again. That's what we're doing. We're doing it once again. This time we're taking it to a whole nother level. Well, I'm excited. And you want to make sure that you pick up a CD because we're all about experiencing the presence of God. And God has anointed this woman of God to lead others into his presence. So not only through workshops, 
Not only does she do it as a minister and as a leader of praise and worship at her own church, mm -hmm. but God has blessed her to sing the songs of Zion and record them so that we can have his presence with us every day. Co-pastor, I couldn't help but notice as I was coming through the lobby, there was a flyer about women empowerment. Yes. And that brings me to this point that at least I've noticed in a lot of churches, yeah. there tends to be more women on a praise team than men. Yeah. And I would even venture to try to say maybe 75% of the team may, may be women. Right. And that's different. And I know that now women are being empowered yes. and we're pushing it. You're seeing more of them in politics. And yes. now there's not just a stay home mom, there's a stay home mom and she's a senator, you know, right. <laughs> these exactly. things. Yeah. Exactly. So Ashley, tell me a, a little bit about this empowerment that's coming up. Well, on April the 27th. Wait a minute, before you go any further, I got to ask this. Yes. I am invited, right? You are invited. Okay. All right. You oh, may we might have to yet. put you on. <laughs> You might have to sing a little bit for us. I uh, love the <laughs> But um, it's April 27th, mm -hmm. which is a Friday evening, beginning at 7 o'clock, and also April 28th, when we'll have from 10 o'clock to 2 o'clock, we'll have a, a concert and we'll have some heart-to-heart -heart sessions and a luncheon. And we are empowering women, but it's not so much empowering them as what you said today in society, um, m multiple jobs, multiple uh, responsibilities, and they're learning how, how to survive in spite of yeah. the, um, the challenges of having to now be the provider for their home okay. as, well, as well as sometimes the sole parent. And, uh, but this is more to empower them spiritually to where they will have strength the strength to be able to handle the challenges, but not their own strength, but the strength that comes from God. To be empowered with his spirit, to be empowered with his wisdom and his knowledge so that they'll no longer be defeated. You know, we can have our titles, we can have positions, we can be, uh, our name can be great and known, and yet we still be defeated in our heart and in our mind, in our emotions. And so we want to deal with the inner man so that whether I'm a full-time housewife or the next president of the United States, that my worth, my joy, my peace, it comes from who I am within, whom God has made me, and not by my title. The title only represents what God has done in me and me being in a place where I'm walking in victory so that he can place me in the position that he has purposed me to be in. So we're going to learn how to get in that, that place with God to where we can fulfill our purpose. Because, Cassandra, as you know, the enemy comes to kill, steal, and destroy, mm -hmm. to defeat us mm -hmm. before we ever find out who we really are. And so through this conference, it's to help them to understand, uh, -uh no longer defeated. <laughs> no longer will I let the enemy tear down what God has placed in me. And finding the wisdom and understanding through the word of God and the strategies that God has given us to overcome. Because we will be challenged, right? Yes, ma'am. Yes, I'm sure you've <laughs> been challenged in some of uh, the things that God has given you as a worship leader, mm -hmm. as a consultant, mm -hmm. yes, as a minister. Yes, ma'am. And now as a recording artist. <laughs> but yet, through your relationship with God, you've overcome those challenges. And the enemy is not defeating you. You're walking in the victory of Jesus. Okay, I'm coming. I, You're coming? It. It's I, I got to be here. She's yeah. coming. <laughs> so you need to come as well because it's, it, it, it's our time. It's our time, not just women, for all men and women of God, but this conference is for women. Uh, but men, check it out. We're going to let you come Friday night if you want to because you need to be empowered as well. But we're going to come. We're coming together to say enough is enough. It's time that we walk in what God yes. has called us to. And we're not going to let the devil steal from us mm -hmm. anymore. Come, no longer defeated on April 27th and 28th. Do you know what? At the Women Empowerment, we will be empowered to go through with a smile. <laughs>
You know? Yeah, it's one thing to go through, but it's another it, but it's another thing to know how to go through. We can still go through and yet smile. And you will learn how to do that here at the Women's Empowerment. Please make sure you don't miss it. April 27th at 7 o'clock and April 28th starting at 10 o'clock. We've got a concert and you know what? I don't know. We may have to get you up there singing as well. Okay, then we have to check the date. <laughs> Well, we're running out of time, but we have truly enjoyed Minister Cassandra O'Neill. And I have that CD in my hand to remind you that you can order it online or you can stop by right here, Zion Christian Center, and pick it up. We're located at 2850 Virgilana Road, right here in Roxborough, North Carolina. Or visit us on the web at zionchristiancenter.net. Or remember, you can always pick up that phone and call us at 336 503 0056. God bless you. Now, as we prepare to, to leave, we want to ask Miss Cassandra, would you just lead us out with a song? Amen. Let's Thank you, worship Jesus. together. Thank you, Jesus. How great. Thank you, Jesus. Is our God. Hallelujah, Jesus. Sing with me how great. Oh, thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Is our God. He is great. All will see how great, great how great Hallelujah. is our God. If you desire prayer, if you desire uh, to be ministered to, we want to invite you to just come visit us. Is We're here God. every Sunday morning, 11 o'clock, right here at Zion Christian Center. Is and if you God. desire to be in service midweek, we're here at 7 o'clock on Wednesday night. Or you can call us. Someone is here between 10 o'clock and 2 o'clock almost every day. Give us a call. We'll be happy to pray with you. Amen. And as she sings, I'm going to go before the Lord in prayer. So pray with me. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, Lord, I just thank you for this mighty woman of God. And I thank you for the gift that you have given the body of Christ through her. Because, Lord, there are so many that are empty, so many, God, that are thirsty and desiring more, more of you. They don't realize it. They don't realize that what they're desiring is you. They don't realize at times that the emptiness that they're trying to fulfill through all kinds of addictions or, or hurt and painful uh, lifestyles, that what they're looking for can be found in you, Jesus. And God, you have anointed Cassandra to help us get into your presence. And Father, I pray right now that they will call upon you and know that the presence of God is what's missing in their life. That the presence of God will feel that emptiness and that where the Spirit of the Lord is, there's liberty. So where the Spirit of God is and where your presence is, that they can experience the liberty and the freeness to enjoy life. So Father, right now, someone may be hurting, someone may be uh, downhearted, someone may be going through financial difficulties. Someone may be lost and so bound in sin, God, that they don't even know how to cry out to you. Well, Father, we just cry out on their behalf. And we ask you even right now to begin to draw them, to begin to draw them to you, Father, because no one can come to, to the Father except the Spirit of God draw them. So begin to draw them, Lord, and let them know that you're there and that there is nothing too hard for you and whatever they're going through, that you're there to bring them out. Thank you for your presence. Thank you for your power. Thank you for your anointing. We receive the miracle in the lives of the hearers today. In Jesus' name, amen. Right before I die, I gotta... Let out my dreams so I can...